In laptop field, the competition between Intel and AMD is intense. Actually, many years ago, AMD's mobile processors were terrible. It was no match to Intel. There was a saying goes i3 is better than a8, i5 is better than AMD. In 2019, AMD released the first batch of mobile Zen processors. 7 nanometers process and advanced architecture hit slowly progressed Intel by surprise. Everyone was yelling, AMD yes. Since then, AMD and Intel began to compete. Now, we are entering the third year of the competition. Early this year, Intel released 12 General Core i7-12700H, and AMD countered with R76800H. Which one of these two processors is stronger? What's the good and bad of the laptops that use them? To figure this out and control variable as good as we can, we bought a 15 and F15 and made a direct comparison. We want to know which one of the new AMD and Intel processors is better, and what it is good or bad at. So let's begin. Okay, that's all for specs. Let's run some tests then. First a single core. In Cinebench R20 single thread, i7-12700H scored 698, nearly 20% better than 11th general here we have R15 and R23's benchmarks. That's the similar boost. Intel 12th gen processors use a new microarchitecture, and IPC improved, so single core improved. Compared with Intel's architecture update, AMD's method is simpler. Increase the clock speed to the limit. Thanks to the process upgrade, 6000 series has higher clock than 5000 series. Unfortunately, compared with 12 general core, R76800H still falls behind in single core performance. After all, it's only improved, but not changed. Just as expected. We also tested the score of R15 and R23. 6800H falls behind a little in R15. The difference in R23 and R20 are similar. Next is multi-core performance. Starting with Cinebench R20. Obviously, better single-core performance and hybrid collaborative computing makes i7-12700H the winner here. In 15 rounds of loop test, i7 scored between 6400-6500. It's worth mentioning that, the machines we bought are a bit different from the engineering samples, mainly on temperature. Except model with excellent cooling like Y9000P and Raj Strix SCAR. This 14-core processor is a challenge for mainstream chassis cooling. 
although cooling can be a challenge. Once it's done the improvement is huge. If both at 80W, i7 is better than R7. But here comes the question. On gaming laptops or all-round laptops with worse thermals, what would the performance of these two processors be? We limited the power at 45W and 65W, and ran a series of tests. At 65W, on Cinebench R20 results, i7 is still about 8% better than R7. Same goes for the gap of R23. However, besides rendering performance, in X265 codec test, 65WR76800H is better than Intel, about 8.7%. In 7-zip test, Intel is better at compressing, while AMD is better at decompressing. At 65 watts, AMD has better performance per watt. Rendering still falls behind, but gap is smaller. For software optimized for AMD or not optimized for hybrid design, R7 and i7 are trading blows. What if power is reduced to 45 watts? R20 results are even. R76800H reached 4700. In R15, R7 even surpassed i7, 6% better. Besides, i7's performance dropped more in X265 and 7-zip. Obviously, for multi-core, 14 core is demanding. Without enough power, i7 is no better than R7. At low power, R7 is even better in some software. We also tested their GPU performance, and they have almost the same results. The biggest difference is in superposition, but less than 1%. So, except CPU, is there no difference between these two models? Well, there's RAM. Both two laptops use DDR5 4800 MHz Samsung memory. F15s read and write both 58K, latency 97 nanoseconds. A15s read and write are slower, but latency is better. Intel RAM has higher bandwidth, and AMD lower latency. Neither is good. Okay, that's all for benchmarks. Next is the game test. They both support MUX switch. We chose cold switching in the test, both in performance mode. DOTA2 Ultra settings, i7-12700H is 20 FPS more in both 2K and 1080p. DOTA2's FPS relies on single core and RAM. Intel has better single core, and higher FPS. The same goes for CSGO. 30 more FPS in 1080p, 50 more in 2K. For high FPS games, Intel is better. Move on to 3A games. In Shadow of Tomb Raider their FPS are almost the same in 2K. Reduced to 1080p, Intel's FPS is slightly higher. Because in 2K and Ultra settings, graphics is the bottleneck. But they both use 140W3060, the performance is the same, so there is not much difference. If reduced to 1080p, graphics load is lighter at some scenarios, then you'll see the difference of other hardware performance. Next is content creation test. Intel is about 12% higher in PSNA. In PR test, Intel's iGPU has codec acceleration. It has higher score in replay, so the overall score is higher. Next is SpecView 2020 for GPU. Because they both use 3060, so the overall results are close. Some tests are affected by CPU and RAM, but they are not the main reason. To sum up, in 3A games, most bottlenecks are in GPU. So for both Intel and AMD, RTX 3060 limits the FPS. Especially they both have MUX, so the result and experience are same. Intel is better at high FPS games that rely less on GPU. For content creation, Intel with its iGPU and software collaboration and optimization for years still comes out on top. Not only the advantage in performance, the iGPU optimization also makes editing easier. In industrial graphical design software, each CPU has its own advantage. Further boost relies on DGPU performance. Okay, move on to interior. The disassembly is basically the same. Unscrew the bottom case. We found they are identical inside. 
battery at bottom, both 90 watt hours. In PC Mark 10, they have similar results in hybrid mode. In iGPU only mode, AMD lasts one hour longer. They both have 512 gigs SSD, PCIe Gen 4. Intel uses Micron 3400, AMD PM9A1. Some say F15 has performance anomaly in SSD 4K file. This one has not. F15's Intel AX201 supports CNVI. A15 uses MediaTek MT7921. Both support Wi-Fi 6. Lastly, cooling. As you can see, both cooling modules have dual fans, 5 heat pipes. For power supply, there is small adjustment. Except that there is no difference. Let's test their cooling performance through stress test. Room temperature at 25 degrees. In stress FPU, i7-12700H was at 94 degrees, 85 watts. P-Core at 3.7 GHz, E at 3. R76800H was at 84 degrees, 65 watts, 4 GHz. At same temperature, 6800H reached 72.8 watts, all-core clock at 4.1 GHz. 0.1 higher than default enhanced mode. In stress GPU, both were at 140 watts, 80 degrees, 1900 MHz. In dual test, F15 was at 45 and 115 watts. CPU at 2.4 and 2.2 GHz. GPU at 1762 MHz. A15 at 37 and 122 watts. CPU 3.175 GHz. GPU 1815 MHz. We disabled dynamic boost and locked GPU at 115 watts. After dual test, CPU was at 93.1 degrees, 45 watts. GPU at 84.8 degrees, 115 watts. Their cooling are very close. Both overall powers are around 160 watts. R76800H, at same temperature, can't reach 75 watts. That's 10 less than F15. For these two CPUs, with better cooling F15 will have bigger boost. While boost for A15 will be smaller. Move on to exterior temperature. They have similar results. The middle is around 47 degrees. WASD keys and arrow keys are cool. For noise test, we adopt a new method. Put it 15 centimeters away 30 centimeters high from laptop. Trying to simulate the real sound level you hear. They use same fans so noise are almost the same. Environment noise at 31.8 decibels. Laptop noise reached 53.7 decibels. Well, after all these tests now you've learned about these two laptops. We're supposed to bring you the good and bad of them. But for your convenience we made a hexagon comparison. For CPU performance, F15 is dominant in single core and multi core. But for GPU performance, they use the same GPU. When GPU and CPU are both under full load, they have same overall power. But A15 CPU is hotter. In stress FPU, F15 reached 85 watts, 95 degrees. A15 only 73 watts, 95.1 degrees. My guess is, besides 12th gen larger area easier to cool down. AMD 6 nanometers process causes a severe overheat. However, for i7-12700H, F15 CPU cooling is not enough. To fully release its performance, you need a more powerful cooling. They have similar temperature and noise. Compared to last general, max temperature is higher. Finally, let's compare Intel and AMD, and their pros and cons. First, very few models use AMD processor. Last year, almost all OEM made chassis ready for two chips. We can easily find the model we want in mainstream gaming laptops. But this year, only A15 uses the latest Ryzen 6000 series. Other brands Ryzen edition are not available yet. Second, Intel processor is more demanding in cooling. Even F15's cooling improved a lot, but for a 14-core i7-12700H, it still hits thermal throttling. Same thing happens for G15 and Omen 15. Last year's chassis is enough for 11th gen core. But to fully release the performance of 12th gen is not easy. 12th gen core's multi-core advantage is based on cooling. Third, at low power, AMD processor's multi-core is not bad. The results of Ryzen 6000 series at 45 and 65 watts are close to Intel. For less powerful cooling, 
R7 and i7 only have difference in single core. The difference of multi-core won't be as large as at high power. Fourth, for gaming only, these two laptops' performances are close. The upgrade is mainly on CPU and RAM. GPU only got 10W boost for power. That's too little for gaming performance. In most GPU heavy games, they have no difference. Plus AMD now supports MUX switch, the difference is even smaller. In some high FPS games, Intel indeed has advantage. But it also costs more. From the perspective of cost for the performance boost I think AMD is better value for the money. Fifth, new products are less worthwhile than old products. In my opinion, new Intel processor has large improvement, which deserves praise. But power is still an issue. It must be addressed before Intel dominates. However, for consumers whether it is new AMD or Intel, the current price is too high. Compared with last year's full power models, you know, needless to say. If you only play games, and budget is limited, you don't really have to buy the latest product. Last year's model with full power graphics is a better option. Okay, that's all for this video. If you enjoy this video, please hit like, and subscribe to our channel. To share information and provide guidance. This is Biba Laptops I'm Jawan. I'll see you in the next video.